In this section, we'll look into how to create an animation in a 3D environment. If you take a look here, the camera moves along the flowers and following the butterflies. So the flowers are in 3D layers and they are pushed into a specific depth. Let's take a look at here. We have this sky, which is because the sky is a flat color, so we won't turn it into 3D layers. And we have our clouds at the back. And we have the first layer of flowers and we have the bushes. And we have second layer of flower, we have bushes and we have the foreground flowers and bushes. So if you take a look on the top view, we will be able to see that this is the viewport that we will see. The layers go beyond from the preview viewport. As long as in our camera view, we will be able to see the elements. We don't really need to worry about it, whether is it off or inside the viewport on top or side view. This is the camera and our butterfly is flying above the flower fields. So let's take a look how to create this. So we have a new project and right now I need to import my Illustrator file. So I have my garden. I just import my garden first. I need to choose composition, retain layer and create composition, open. Okay, once I import, I need to create a folder called com and a folder called resources. I drag my resources folder here and I put things into my resources. I hold down Ctrl D to duplicate my garden so that I have full control on the animation and if let's say anything happen, I can still go back to my resources composition to grab whatever layers I want. I have this garden, I underscore com. So if you take a look, it's 19, 20, 10, 80, which means I already put it properly in my illustrator. I double click the garden com and here you go. You can have everything here. Now I need to rearrange my things a bit. Right now my flowers are in different layers. I need to turn them into a composition so that it's easy for me to animate later on and duplicate them. Flower, I hold down shift and select the last one. I go to layer, pre-compose and definitely it will ask you to move the attributes. So here I put flower tree and I click OK and select my flower two, composition, pre-compose, flower two, click OK. I have my three flowers over here. I double click into the composition and I can see my flower over here. Right now, I feel that my comb is too huge. It's very hard for me to control the flower outside here because when I select it, you see it's the whole composition. So what I can do is I can go to Control K to open up my composition setting or I go here, composition setting, click on it. And now I know that this is a quite tall element. So I reduce the width into 800. The height I reduce as well to 800. And I try to move everything up to the center. Now I think this is good. And same thing, I work on my flower too. Okay. I have my flowers arranged and I have my bushes. That is fine. I need to change my color. All the clouds I change to blue colors. All the bushes I change to green colors. And my flower I change to orange. Now my sky, I can change to cyan. So I can just lock my sky because I'm not going to move them. And right now I need to select all layers and turn them into 3D layers and make sure I'm in my classic mode. And I need to go to two view so that I can see them here. I will prefer to go to side view, left, either left, either right. I can create my camera 
new camera I choose one note camera and make it default so this is my camera every time when you start working on your scene it's better to have your camera and now I need to make sure that the depth that I push is far enough from each other so that that more obvious when we push it to the back you will realize that the elements become smaller that is fine we can still increase the size of it and you just move it up and you can always press S to increase the size because it's far so you don't need to worry about the pixelated so let's move it to here wherever you like okay just move it around first now we close the cloud if not enough far we can do it later so we have the background bush now i choose maybe i choose this to move to the back flower tree to move behind the first bushes i move my bushes and my flower to the back this is my background and i can move can just turn them off first okay i have this now i need to move my flower slightly to the back so that it won't disturb the bush layer and remember there is 3d depth over here and it's better for you to arrange from foreground So normally we don't want our flower to be in the same direction it will look too familiar so what i did is i will go to scale and do a flip so i just untick the link and go to my x i press negative and i flip my flower slightly and other than this you can also try to go to rotation and try to rotate your flower so that they are not all in straight alignment so you will see the variation of the flowers so let's move on to the second scene for my mid ground bushes and my second flower i move it in between my bushes and i push them when i want to push the z depth i can move them when i hover onto the arrow i can see the z appear and i can push them to the back so here is my second flower and um same thing you can move it to the bottom move it to the bottom and you can scale them as well if you want to have more depth move the flower have a bit of distance as well so if you want to have more depth in between them you can move them but you need to make sure that they are not floating in the sky so you can move them around and i push my bushes slightly and i push my bushes slightly front for you okay move it up slightly okay so right now i can have my first layer remember you need to set your scene before you animate your camera okay so now i can check on the depth whether is it enough so i can go to my position for my camera i try to zoom it in so maybe not enough that I can move further okay so remember when we animate try not to let this happen 
where my bushes is coming off from the ground. Okay. So if you take a look at this, we have enough depth. We can start doing animation. So now we have our camera try to just zoom it in and we can expand it and keyframe our position. If you want to have a slightly rotation, it's fine. So you can try to rotate. This is X rotate, this is Y rotate, and this is Z rotate. So I can have a slightly Z rotation. And maybe I move it down slightly. And I can have my a bit of Y rotation, but I need to move it that part. Okay, I create my keyframe and I go to my, I think we will just animate for five seconds. Just hold down Control K to set my composition into five seconds. Okay. Now I can zoom it in and I use the tools here. I press C, I zoom it in and I try to rotate. Sometimes you see that when I want to rotate, it's a bit hard for me to rotate the Z position. So what I can do is I can rotate back here using the figure. So we have done our camera movement. Now we need to add in our butterflies. So let's take a look on the butterflies. Go to resources, control I to import our butterflies in AI. Create composition, composition retain layer, import, and we have our butterflies. I duplicate the butterfly composition and drag it to the com folder. And this is the butterfly that I'm going to animate. Now, before that, I create a folder inside the com folder and write pre com. So my flowers and my butterflies are actually my pre-coms, which means my minor com that support the main com. I double click into my butterflies and here is the layers. I need to turn them into 3D layers. But before I turn them into 3D layers, I need to make sure that the anchor point are nicely placed. So I am going to animate the wing. So I hold down my control and drag the anchor point to the side here and drag the anchor point to the side here. So now I turn them into 3D layers and make sure we are in classic 3D mode. And I go to have, take a look at the two views. And this is the default camera view, which is fine. And we need to parent the wings to the link. So we set the body as our main parent. And right now we need to animate the butterflies. The body will be up and down. So I hold down control arrow. One, two, three, four, five. Go selection two and push it down. One, two, three, four, five. I copy the first keyframe and paste. Control C and Control V. So this is the movement that I have. I open up the wings. I hold down my R. And here I'm going to rotate my Y rotation. So when it goes when it's up, the wing is actually rotating down. So I push to 35. And this one should be negative 35. And we just keyframe. Rotation keyframe. And go to the next keyframe. And here it turns to negative 35 because it goes up 35. And the third keyframe. 35 or you can just copy the first keyframe and paste back to the next keyframe and if you take a look that there is a problem because the layers keep on chopping on off the body we need to go back to our wing and we solo we solo the wing and we take a look at the anchor point so we go to my anchor point and we try to move the X to the side here. Same goes to this layer. I hold down spacebar to get the hand tool. 
So, so even if we are having this, it will chop it in. So we need to somehow move them away. With selection tool, I push them away from the body and this one also away from the body. Okay, so we have our butterfly flying. I press U to release just the keyframe attributes and we are not going to animate for the whole five seconds. What we need to do here is we make them loop. So alternate, click on the stopwatch to open up the script tab and at the expression here, we can click on the arrow and go up to property, loop out duration, apply into wing as well. So here is what we get. But right now the animation is quite static. Select all the keyframe, right click, keyframe assistant, easy is. So if you take a look, the butterfly now has more ease. So select all, control A to select all and close it and we can go up to the main com. So right now at the main com here, I have my butterfly. I just drag and drop the composition. And if you take a look, it's like this. And I try to turn it into 3D layers and you will see that it becomes a flat 3D layers, even though it will follow the camera movement, but it's still flat if we see here. We already animated it in 3D form, which is inside here. And how come when I get out, it becomes like that? Because pre-com layer is still considered a flat layer. So what you can do is at this rasterize, you click on the rasterize, it will penetrate into the pre-com and read the data from the layers. So if you take a look at here, once I turn this on, you will be able to see the butterfly is actually flying. You see the 3D layers. I need to scale down the butterflies and make it fly along the scene. I press P to get my position and I try to move it out so that it feels that it's coming from the camera. Whichever way that is easy for you to animate, you just follow your animation preference. So let's take a look how it goes. And remember, because your butterfly is in 3D layer, try to avoid chopping into the flowers. For example, this is like your layers are chopping into each other's. So what you can do is, remember, you can just move them up. So here you are chopping as well. So at this point, it cuts into the flower. So we need to, maybe I can go to my top view. Here, I know that it's chopping my flower. I select this and I try to push my handle to the side so that it avoids it. Okay, and right now the butterfly is like having a direction but not following the direction of the path. So we can go to right click, transform, auto orient, orient along path. And it will follow the path. So I can kind of make it rotate it more. So just double check whether at any frame that it will chop off the flowers. So let's take a look on the final animation. Okay, so this is how you animate the camera and the butterfly through a scene. So we have our main animation done, which is the camera and the butterflies. Now let's get back to one view. We no longer need that. And we see that the flowers are quite static. Let's get into our flowers and start working on our flowers. 
So I get into the flower one, double click. Right now I have 15 seconds, so this is enough. And I want to work on the flower. It's like having the wind like blowing, the flower will bend a bit. I try to move all the leaves to parent to the stem and the flower also parent to the stem. Remember, inside here, we don't really need to have a 3D layers. So we can always move our anchor points whenever we want. And we can animate the leaves and all that. But in this section, I'm going to talk about the band tool. So now I can create adjustment layer and see what I can do. I can apply the band it in my adjustment layer and try to bend the whole thing. Now, you'll be able to see something like this. Why? Because of the start point and end point. I need to move my end point above and my start point at the bottom. Now, if I play around with the band, my, my flower is bending and I like to change it to yellow and I keyframe it. So I bend a bit slightly to the left and I hold down U and maybe at two seconds, I bend to the right and my fourth second, I copy and paste. Same with what we have done just now. Just right click, easy is, hold down alternate, click on the stopwatch, and property, look up duration. So this is what we will be able to see. So let's continue with the other two flowers. I can reuse my adjustment layer and I can turn that into adjustment layer tab. So I can always go and create my bandit. So now I have my flowers like this. The thing now is my flower is like having the same rotation, same speed and all that. I can offset them slightly. So because my pre-comp is longer than my main composition, so I can move it around. Remember, if you are doing offset animation, you may make your pre-comp longer in duration than your main composition. So when I move, the timing of them will be different. And let's take a look. Ah, on my yellow flowers, my flower too seems to have the same direction and I flip them slightly. Okay, if let's say you feel that the speed is still the same, this is what you can do. At this empty space here, we have stretch, right click. You can click on the stretch and you can start to change the speed of the flower. Maybe some are faster, some are slower. So if you take a look at the animation right now, it is more lively and you can see the flower is happily swinging around. So this is how we set up a 3D layers environment and animate the camera passing through the flower fuse.